Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged News. Now, before I start anything, I just want to point out a new addition to the Fully Charged set. That tiny little thing there is a model Nissan Leaf 2018 version. It's the new Nissan Leaf. I've got one. It's just it's a little bit small. Now, we've covered some unusual electric vehicles over the years on Fully Charged, but nothing I repeat, nothing comes close to this brute. It's an all-electric quarry truck based on a Komatsu diesel. This is a 50-ton quarry truck that is powered by a 700 kilowatt hour battery. The battery alone weighs 4.5 tons, but it is a 50-ton quarry truck. So everything about this thing is fairly chunky. It's operating in a Swiss cement quarry. But here's the fairly unique part. The quarry is up a mountain. The cement works is down in a valley. So this massive beast hauls itself up the 13% incline up the track up to the quarry and then it's loaded up with 70 tons of rocks and then it comes back down. Then instead of using brakes to maintain a steady speed coming down the track, it uses the motor to regenerate power and this is what's caught everyone's attention. Using the regenerative braking, the machine generates more power coming down the hill than it uses going up. You see, when it goes up, it weighs 50 tonnes, and when it comes back down, it weighs 120 tonnes. Now, I've read dozens of reports on this, and they all say it uses 30 kilowatt hours to get up the hill, and it generates 40 kilowatt hours when it's coming down, i.e. every time it comes down, it's producing 10 kilowatt hours more, which it then feeds back into the grid. This machine, once it's charged, uses nothing from the grid. It actually delivers electricity to the grid. But I have to say, a couple of things don't make sense here. 30 kilowatt hours doesn't sound like that much to haul a 50 ton truck up a mountain. If this is correct, why on earth would you fit a 700 kilowatt hour battery to the thing? If anyone's got any ideas on this, I'm sure you'll leave them in the comments and I look forward to that. Now, in a recent news update, I mentioned uh, that some Chevy Bolt owners in the USA had had problems with their battery packs. But here's a bit of positive news about the amazing Chevy Bolt. This vehicle has an EPA range of 238 miles, but a team in Europe using the Opel Ampera E, which is the equivalent of the Chevy Bolt in Europe, but we don't get it in the UK, thanks very much, General Motors, uh, they've managed to drive 754 kilometers, which is 446 miles on one charge. Okay, so they were hypermiling. They were driving in perfect conditions at an average speed of 48 kilometers an hour on very flat roads. Oh my God, it took them 25 hours and 30 minutes. I mean, it must have been so boring. I tried hypermiling in my Nissan Leaf years ago. I got well over 100 miles, but I got so bored, I just couldn't be bothered to do it anymore. But anyway, hats off to them. You can drive 445 miles on one charge in a Chevy Bolt if you've got a lot of time on your hands. Now, many people have asked Fully Charged why manufacturers don't put solar panels on their cars. Well, I worked out I need a solar array about half the size of a tennis court to maintain enough power in the Tesla Model S to keep it going. And that, I decided, would make parking it even more complicated and challenging. But that's based on producing enough power to keep the car moving. What if you had enough to trickle charge it all the time you weren't using it? So a German company called Sono Motors has developed a car called the Scion, a very small, lightweight electric car, and that is covered in flexible solar PV panels, which produce enough juice on a sunny day to extend the range of the vehicle by 30 kilometers. Okay, that may not sound like very much, but you know, if you're not using the car, you may as well be charging it. You're charging it for nothing, parked outside in the sunshine. Nice. But that's only half the story, really. They're using some really clever technology that I haven't seen elsewhere. You can literally plug anything that uses electricity into the front of your car. The electricity goes both ways along the wire. So you can run a, a discotheque out in a field and you can have a rave. Or you can run a barbecue or a load of lights. Or you can run a freezer or, a, a, you know, camping lights and stuff like that. It's really clever. And using the app that comes with the car, you can actually transfer power from your car to someone else's. You just plug the two cars in and the power goes one way. And what's more, the app allows you to charge for it. So you can charge someone who's got a Scion and say, look, it's three, three euros to fill your car up if you don't need yours and yours is charging off something else. You know, just in an emergency, in a lay-by, in the rain. I like to describe electric cars as batteries and computers on wheels with seats and a steering wheel, you know, and air conditioning. But what Sonomotors have done is make that a practical reality. 
Of course, you can charge this car using the conventional methods, just plug it into the grid like you do with any other electric car. It has a range of about 250 kilometers, and it sounds like a really nice little motor. We are looking forward to test driving a Sono Motors Scion next year. Now, regular viewers of Fully Charged will know that we recently visited the Burbo Bank Extension just outside Liverpool, in Liverpool Bay, uh, where we saw, at the time, the biggest wind turbines in the world. But since then, a report has come out that shows that the cost of offshore wind has fallen by half since 2011. I'm going to repeat that. It has dropped by half. The original projected strike price for electricity from the increasingly embarrassing Hinkley Point C White Elephant, I mean state-of-the-art nuclear power station, was £98 a megawatt hour. It's actually already gone up to over £100 a megawatt hour. By the time they possibly finish actually building it, in some time like 2028 to 2030, the cost of the electricity coming from that monster will be prohibitively expensive. Today's strike price for electricity from offshore wind is £58 a megawatt hour. That is almost half what Hinkley Point C's will cost and all indications are that offshore wind costs will decrease. So the question is, why has the price dropped so dramatically? Well, the answers are fairly simple. The bigger the wind turbine, the more often it operates and the more power it generates. 25 years ago, the biggest offshore wind turbines were between 250 and 500 kilowatts. Today's latest monster machines are 10 megawatts. I mean, they are huge. So 25 years ago, you'd need 20 turbines offshore to generate 10 megawatts. Now you need one. So multiply that by an ever-increasing manufacturing base, a much larger knowledge and understanding of how wind turbines work, a less uh, wires on the, the seabed because you've only got one turbine as opposed to 20, and uh, much less maintenance because you're only looking after one turbine as opposed to 20, then you can see why costs are constantly falling. And 10 megawatts isn't the end of it. There are already plans being drawn up for 15 megawatt wind turbines. The top of those blades, when they're at their, their highest point, will be higher than the Shard in London. These are truly massive machines. I think it's now a simple fact that offshore wind is a major game changer in the energy market. And for once, the UK is actually in the lead. Yeah. We're even ahead of the Germans. I, mean, I can't believe it. We generate more offshore wind than anyone else in the world. I mean, it's un, 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 unimaginable. Rule Britannia. I mean, Nigel Farage should be harping on about this at every opportunity. Oh, damn. I promised I wouldn't use any bad language on Fully Charged. I'm sorry. And now from wind to oil, sort of. So Shell have just announced that they are opening up their first refueling station in London that doesn't sell petrol. Yes, that's right. An installation that looks to all intents and purposes exactly the same as a petrol filling station, but it won't sell any petrol. It will instead have fast chargers and hydrogen fuel pumps under a big canopy that's covered in solar panels. I just want to remind you that this is Shell, an oil company that are doing this. I never know how to react to news like this. I mean, oil companies like Shell are either greenwashing or in massive denial, but I think this project does have some positive points. Shell are in the process of installing 400 rapid chargers in their standard petrol and diesel refuelling stations around the country. There is a catch. They are charging 49 pence a kilowatt hour for drivers to use their rapid chargers. That is way more than double that you'd pay on a normal daytime tariff at your house and about four times more than you'd pay uh, charging a car overnight on an off-peak tariff. So it's not cheap. This electricity had better be really high quality luxury electricity. All that said, this is another sign that even oil companies are seeing the writing on the wall. So I think, generally speaking, it's a good thing. Now, finally, at the other extreme end of the car charging spectrum, I really love this quirky carport. This is the Giraffe carport and it was developed in Sweden and it, it's a combination of solar and wind generated electricity that runs down into a charger underneath. So you park your car underneath and you plug it in and the, the electricity is coming from the solar and the wind. It's really sweet. And because it utilizes both solar and wind, it has a far steadier generation profile than any one single source. I mean, of course, this is a prototype and it costs a bomb. This is $60,000 for one of these. I mean, I really want one in my garden, but I think that's probably a little bit much to start with. It's very cool looking though, isn't it? I love the giraffe. Anyway, that's it. That's enough. Uh, just a few Patreon supporters who support Fully Charged with uh, $10 a month or more. So grateful to you guys. There's only a few. Stick with me. Peter Staines, Ron Amy, Ian Morton, Ken Steely, and Johan Morsing. 
thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate it. That's all we've got time for. Please do have a look at the Patreon link that's below this video. Uh, please subscribe to Fully Charged. I haven't said that for a long time, but we really appreciate the subscribers. The numbers keep going up. It's fantastic. We're getting more and more views. We're going to produce more and more videos. It's all very exciting. There's loads of really cool things to come. Please stay tuned. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.